Pastor Lau and Pastor Dala Haprasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church in Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's anointed teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. And now, Pastor Lau. I want to say something extreme so that you understand my point. I want to say something extreme. For example, if you have a curse in your life, such as cancer, your grandparent died of cancer, your parent died of cancer, and that evil spirit of cancer follow you, we call family spirit, and residing on the inside of you, it hasn't manifested yet in cancer. So, that spirit is going to tell you, get out of here right now because one day I want to kill you with cancer. You see my point? This is serious. This is life and death. You may not know what evil spirit is going to get out of you when the fire of God touch you. And that evil spirit may try to kill you one day, spirit of death. If you love yourself, get into the fire of God because you have two choices. Either the spirit leave you or you leave with the evil spirit. Listen one more time. Let the spirit leave you by the fire of God. Or you run out to the door with the evil spirit. Which one do you want to choose? Which one? First one or second one? Okay. If you answer the first one, I don't need to do brain transplant. <laughs> if you say, say second one, something wrong. Okay. I'm just straightforward to you. Okay. I just want to let you know that the evil spirit just do not want you to be prayed for. And it's not fun because they come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Get them out of you as soon as possible. Don't keep them. And some of you may have thousands of them. We may have to clean you up a few times before you get cleaned up 100%. Amen? Amen. I noticed this in Thailand. Some people come five times already. They come, become less and less and less, become calm and become more and more glorious because they get cleaned up every time they come for a few times. Amen? Okay, let me teach the Word of God, and then we will pray for people. We have been talking about knowing the Holy Spirit. And I believe that it's so important to know the Holy Spirit and recognize Him, fellowship with Him, and work with Him. It's like when I live in my house, if I don't know Pastor Da, I get into trouble. I need to know her. I know how to work with her, that I even can look at her eyes and I know right away what she thinks. If I don't know, I can be in trouble. Do you see my point? How many people know somebody enough that when you look at their eyes, you say, okay, I know what you're thinking. You need to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit that deep that you can know Him and look at the eyes of the Holy Spirit, you know right away what He thinks. And the Holy Spirit was given to us for our sake, for our blessings. Amen? Look at Isaiah 44, verse 3, one more time. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will, God say, I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. Two things come together. Holy Spirit and blessings. Because the spirit is the spirit of blessing. Evil spirit Bring curses, but the Spirit of God will bring the blessing of Abraham. And this is a prophecy for the end time. We are living in the end time, and the Lord said that in the end time, He will pour out His Spirit on His people. And we have our own free choice. Whether we allow Him to pour His Spirit on us, or we say, no, 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 I don't want it. I can handle my own life. I don't need the Holy Spirit. But if we understand the scripture, we will say, I'm going to press in. I want more of the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God will bring all kinds of blessing to us. But in order to be able to walk with the Spirit and know the Spirit, we need to look at the scripture together. What the scripture says about the Holy Spirit, we need to study the Word of God together. I believe with all my heart that we all need the Word fully and the Spirit of God fully. We cannot just go by the Holy Spirit without knowing the Word because the Word of God 
is our guideline, is our boundary. Anything out of the word of God is not from God. Everything that God does is according to the Bible. This is our guideline. Last time we learned that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is not an abstract. He is not just an idea. He is not just a power. But he is a person, and he has all kind of characteristics of a person will have. I give you example. The Holy Spirit has a will. Everyone say will. Do we have wills? Yes. You make decision who you're gonna marry to. You make decision which house you're gonna buy or which apartment you're gonna rent. You have a will which school you're gonna go to. So the Holy Spirit has a will as well. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. He gives them to each one just as He, mean the Spirit, determines. As in the New King James Version say, as He wills. So this scripture, Paul talk about the manifestation or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some people have the gift of healing. Some people have the gift of preaching and teaching. Some people may have the gift of encouragement, the gift of pastor, whatever gifts. Paul said that the Holy Spirit is the one who works inside them and manifests that gift or that power or that supernatural ability through those Christians, and he determines what gifts he gonna give or what kind of manifestation. He will reveal through a person. We cannot force God. The Holy Spirit has His own will, and His will is in harmony with the will of the Father. In other words, the Father is in heaven, sitting on His throne. He is still the ruler and the Lord of everything, and the Lord Jesus Christ is at His right hand, interceding for the church for all of us. But both the Father and the Lord Jesus sent the Holy Spirit into the world today. The Holy Spirit is God. He is in the world right now with all of us who are believers, and the Holy Spirit represent the Father and the Lord Jesus, and the will of the Father for either for the nation, for the church, for each individual is given through the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit will reveal the will of the Father to each and every one of us. The will of the Father for us, each and every one of us. Amen. What is His will where you live? What is His will? What church you join? What is His will? What job you need to take? What school you need to go to? We want the will of the Father, and who reveal the will of the Father? The Holy Spirit determines. That's why it's so important that we need to know the Holy Spirit and really hook up to Him and really know the will of God for your life, for your ministry. I know the will of God for my life for sure. I know. I know. I know my ministry very well because I'm very close to the Holy Spirit and know exactly what God wants me to do. I'm not confused. I know, and I know, and I know because I know Him. So we all need to be able to say, "Yes, I know the will of the Father through the Holy Spirit." Amen. And He will reveal that definitely. The will of the Father is revealed in the book called the Bible, as a general will. We call logos. Logos is the written word that reveal the will of the Father. But out of the word, God will give you specific will for each person. We call rema. Rema. Is the will of God specifically for each person? For example, I know that it's the will of God. There is a rema of Peter that he was walking on the water that day. But if you use that as logo, logo that you're going to walk into the Lake Washington, God will not guarantee you can walk on that Lake Washington because it's not rema for you unless the Holy Spirit speak to you. Walk on that water. Each and every one of us has rema for our life. What we're we gonna do? What is the ministry? Where are we gonna live? What kind of work we do in the church? Everything we need to find out from God, so that we will not waste time, we will not make mistakes, we will not lose money unnecessarily, 
And not only that, if we walk in the perfect will of God that come by the Holy Spirit, we will be so fruitful. Our life will not waste away. One day when Jesus come back, you look up, see h e Jesus and say, "Oh God, I waste 30 years of my life because I don't know Your will." God wants us to be fruitful, and how can we be fruitful? We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have only 24 hours a day. Sometimes I talk to Pastor Doug. Honey, I like to have 48 hours a day. I have so many things to do, but God will not extend the hour for me yet. He still give me 24 hours a day. So it means that we have to be focused exactly what we're gonna do each hour. If we don't hear the will of God through the Holy Spirit, we may waste three hours of life for nothing, and we cannot get those three hours back at all. It's they are gone. They are gone. They are gone. They will never come back. So every single minute, what you're gonna do? The will of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Something may look good, but God may say, "No, don't get involved with that. Go this direction." The Bible say, "He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches." We need to have the open spiritual ears. Listen to what the Spirit of God want to say, and what He says. Is the will of the Father, and it will bring you to the fruitfulness of life instead of wasting your time on something nonsense every day. You need to be fruitful. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, The Bible says, "Keep watch over yourself and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers." You can see here that the Holy Spirit has the will or determination. Who going to be the pastor of each church? Who are going to be elders of each church? He is the one who determines the eldership, the pastor of each congregation. He make a final decision. We need to follow him. Amen. So it's very vital to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. I want to see all of you grow up in the Lord. That you don't need to call me three times a day. What should I do? What should I do? You can hook up to the Holy Spirit yourself. And the spirit of the Lord, I don't mind to talk to you. Don't misunderstand me. I don't mind. I love to fellowship, but I want you to grow up enough that you can listen to God yourself. What you're gonna do when I perform surgery? I need to talk to God and ask God what I'm gonna do next. Every single step in my surgery, I listen to the Holy Spirit. That's why in surgery I was very quiet. I didn't talk that much because I want to listen to the Spirit of the Living God. Amen. How many people want to live that kind of lifestyle every day? 24/7, listen to what the Spirit of God want to say. Another characteristic of a person is emotion. How many people in this room has no emotion at all? Raise your hand up. If you have no emotion, you may need resuscitation because it means you are dead. Only dead people have no emotion. We are living, therefore we have emotion. The Holy Spirit is a living person, a spirit. So he has emotion. It's nothing wrong to have emotion with God. We are human being. We have emotion. God created us in His image, and if God has the emotion, we have the emotion as well. Look at the first emotion that God has. Romans 15 verse 30. I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has love. He is the source of love. That's why, all these few days, when I got the message in the Facebook from Thailand, many of them, ninety percent, I can say in Thai, ninety percent. When I say Thailand, I can speak Thai word. Ninety percent of the people say the same thing that after the Holy Spirit touched me in that hotel, I have more love for God. I fall in love with God again. I love. My wife more. I love my husband more. That emotion, that feeling, get greater, bigger in their life because the Holy Spirit is the one who pour the love, the emotion of love into all of us. That's why the devil doesn't want you to be touched by the Holy Spirit because he knows that if the more Holy Spirit in you, the more godly emotion you will have, and it's good for you. Amen. Your spouse need that godly emotion. Your friend at work need that godly emotion. So you should not 
talk to your spouse like a robot. Honey, I love you. You know I love you. This is Chinese style. Chinese men, Chinese men want to act cool. I'm not gonna show emotion. I love you, honey. We need to get out of that tradition or culture. That is not good culture. We need to show emotion. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Dad said, "Thank you, Holy Spirit." <laughs> Pastor Lao has changed. Have more sensitivity and emotion. Amen. How many people want to have good godly emotion in your life? And you can do that when you look at people. They can feel from your eyes the emotion of love and mercy. The Holy Spirit has mercy, compassion, and love. But one thing that we don't want Him to have, even though He has, is grief and sorrow. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 10, "And everyone who speak a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven." Why did Jesus say this? That if we talk against the Holy Spirit, the Father will not forgive. Because the Holy Spirit is a very gentle person, gentle spirit. He's so sensitive to your sin, your bad attitudes, your bad words or corrupt words. If you sin against God, you have bad attitudes and bad motive and bad words. It really grieves the Holy Spirit. He is a very sensitive and very gentle person. Isaiah 63 verse 10. Yet they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit. You will never see one time in the Bible that the writer of the Bible say, "You grieve the Father" or "You grieve the Son." The Bible only says, "You grieve the Holy Spirit." So He turned and became their enemy, and He Himself fought against them. Ephesians four thirty, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with. Whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The original Greek language, the word "grieve" means to cause sorrow, to offend, to insult, to cause physical and emotional pain. The last person in the world that you want to make him upset is the Holy Spirit. You don't want Holy Spirit to stay away from you. You want him to be around you. So don't grieve him. How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? Sin, unrepentant heart, stubbornness, rebellion against God. If you want to please the Holy Spirit, you need to obey Him and walk in obedience. The Bible say in Ephesians chapter four, verses thirty-one to thirty-two, clearly how to please the Holy Spirit. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander. And along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This is the scripture that talk after the Bible say, "Don't grieve the Holy Spirit." How can we avoid grieving the Holy Spirit? Don't have bitterness against people. Be compassionate to one another, love one another. Don't cause trouble to people. Always bless people. Then we make the Holy Spirit happy. Amen. Another emotion of the Holy Spirit is joy. The joy of the Spirit. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not of eating, drinking, but is righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. So it's okay to laugh in the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit stir up on the inside of you. You can laugh in the Holy Ghost. Actually, I want to see every member in the church laugh in the Holy Spirit. It's wonderful to laugh in the Holy Spirit because when you laugh in the Holy Spirit, there are so many many blessings. Number one, physically, laughter produce good hormone from your brain that make you look younger. I'm serious. This has already been proven scientifically and medically. Laughter. Even some doctor tell their patient to do the belly laughter for 50 minutes a day, and they will not get sick easily. Laughter also build up the immune system, 
that you don't get sick easily. The Bible say that the merry heart is like a medicine. People who laugh all the time look young and healthy. And on the opposite side, people who are very depressed and anxious and worry, they have high blood pressure and have disease and they die early. How many people want to live a long life, 220 years? How many people want to look young? You need to do ha ha ha, ho ho ho, laugh in the Holy Ghost. The laughter from the movie when you watch some comedy movie, that laughter come from the brain, but the laughter or the joy of the Holy Ghost come from the inside because the Holy Spirit is in here. Will laugh from the tummy, like what happened in the dream of one brother here, that he laughed in the Holy Ghost when he woke up from that dream. He laughed. He has abdominal muscle pain because he laughed in the dream. And he really laugh. So when you laugh a lot, sometimes you have abdominal muscle soreness because you laugh from the tummy. And if God make you laugh, don't pull back because of your culture. Again, Chinese men. Again, God make you laugh. Mm. I cannot laugh. I will look undignified. If I look dignified, I need to be like the karate man, like an i p m a n Walk around, no smiling, no laughter. When God tickle you and make you laugh, the joy of the Holy Ghost just let go, laugh, so that the more you cooperate with Him, the more He can work with you. Instead of trying to push, to quench, to push it down, try to fight with the Holy Spirit, let it go, just laugh. Amen, and you can have revival in your home every day. Then the Holy Spirit touch you in your home. You can laugh in the house. That's what happened in Thailand right now. Most people drunk in the Holy Ghost in their bedroom in their car because they don't fight. They just let the Holy Spirit flow to them and they laugh in the Holy Spirit, and it's good. The Bible said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. When I got to Thailand, I was sick the first couple of days with sore throat, and because I was really lacking sleep. Big time jet lag, so I really struggled. But in the meeting, I was laughing at the Holy Ghost all the time. What happened? The, the sickness was gone quickly. And when I came here, I got the strength back right away within a day, because of the laughter, because of the Holy Ghost strength come back to me. So laughter is good for the church. Amen. We should laugh in the Holy Ghost every day. Maybe tonight, everyone set a goal. When I lay hand on you, get the laughter. And don't laugh like this. <laughs> Some people laugh like this. Go ahead, just laugh it out. Just like, oh, one thing I want to say. <laughs> Do you know the name of Isaac mean? Isaac mean laughter. And when Abraham dug the well to feed the animals, he has a lot of animals. He's a rich man, Abraham. So the animal came and drank water from those wells, and at the end of the life of Abraham, the Philistines, the Philistine represent demons, evil spirit, put the stone and rock into those wells, so the well become dry, and the Bible say that Isaac laughter, pull the stone out, pull the rock out, and the well of salvation come back again, the joy. Of the Holy Spirit, this is all symbolic. That God used laughter to open the well of your salvation, the healing, the strength, the grace, the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit just flow out of you. Therefore, if you're gonna open the well, don't open a little bit. <laughs> if you're gonna open the well, open fully. Ha ha ha! Ho ho ho! Open it fully. Just go out. Amen. We don't have Chinese culture here. We need to have heavenly culture. Amen. The joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. So, what else that the Holy Spirit is doing as a person? Look at John chapter 16, 8 to 11. When He comes, mean the Holy Spirit. He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin 
and righteousness and judgment. I'm not going to go into detail about this scripture today. It's not teaching about sin and righteousness and judgment, but I want to emphasize the word convict. The Holy Spirit is a person who convicts you of sin and convicts non-believers as well. That's why those people who got touched by the fire of God in Thailand, when they went out to share the gospel, people got saved so quickly. Why? I believe. Not because they're a great preacher. Actually, these people are upcountry people. They are farmers and no education. They are new believers. They never go to Bible classes, Bible classes, training and seminar. They are new believers. But when they share the gospel with their friend or relative, I believe because the Holy Spirit was so thick in them that the Holy Spirit in them caused conviction on the listener. And the listener got saved easily. When they listen like, yeah, yeah. I need to repent. I need God. People just got saved easily because the Holy Spirit in you caused conviction on the listener. That's why we need the Holy Spirit badly for evangelism, to bring conviction to the hearts of the sinners. Amen? Everyone say conviction. John chapter 3, 5 to 6. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. I believe water here means the Word of God. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul said the water of the Word of God. We need to preach the Word, but the Word of God alone is not enough for people to be born again. People are born again because the Holy Spirit convicts them and speaks to them. I know that's how I get saved. Because when I came to the U.S. for honeymoon, my sister and my brother-in-law shared the gospel with me. And I know the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. I know and I know. Now I look back. He was stirring me up inside me, even though I'm not a believer. He was speaking outside. The Holy Spirit was not inside me yet because I was not a believer yet. But he was speaking to me. Go back to Bangkok. Go to the Bible study. He really convicted me and he showed me who Jesus is. We need the Holy Spirit for evangelism. We need the Holy Spirit to really cause people to be really, truly born again. Otherwise, it's just church, just so, social club. Amen? In fact, I tell you the truth. I have two choices in running the church. One is to make nice program, nice skit, nice color, and light, and latte, and... A lot of nice things to pull people into the church, make a big church. And a lot of time people do that way. But the Lord spoke to me, son, I want you to do another way. Because if you pull people into the church by the soulish or mental or physical attraction, you're going to get a lot of people who are in carnality and just want to come to church to look for a job, for boyfriend and girlfriend and nice program. The Lord told me, don't do that. I want people who get saved in this church really come into the spiritual thing, spiritual life, and really love God and not come here for any show, any program, any latte and coffee shop out there. No, I don't allow any coffee shop out there because I don't want people to come to church for, to drink coffee. They come to God, to this church to drink the new wine only. Amen? And that's my choice. I'm sorry if people don't like it. But I want the church to be spiritual, not the carnal and mental, try to please people mental and physical needs all the time. Amen? Hallelujah. We want people to be truly born again by the Spirit of God. In fact, it's interesting. In Thailand, when I start to lay hand on these 1,000 people, I, in one meeting, I forgot to make an altar call because the time is very short. So I stepped down to lay hand on people. I call elderly people first because... The lie is so long, and some people need to wait for one and a half hours to be prayed for. So I, I call the elderly people, and suddenly two or three people come to me and say, Pastor, I want to get saved. Can you pray that I will get saved? I didn't even make out the call. People walk to me. Can you pray with me to get saved? You know who did that job? Not me. Because my preaching was very strong, not to the non-believers, but was to the believers. But the Holy Spirit brings conviction to them. The Holy Spirit 
caused them to be born again that day is amazing. Amen. The Holy Spirit will also prohibit or stop you from doing things that will cause problem to you. In Acts chapter 16, 6 to 7, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. There are many good things to be done, but not every good thing is the will of God. Are you clear? You can do a lot of good things, but they are the best thing for you. Maybe five good things, but they are not the best. God wants you to get the best. So how do you know what is the best for your life? You have 24 hours a day. One life to live, only 360 days a year, and it's gone all the time. The time is running. The clock is tick, ticking, ticking, tick. Go away. How do you know what is the best for your life? Where to go? How to spend money? Maybe you want to do something out of your own flesh, and the Holy Spirit tried to warn you, don't do that, don't do that. I prohibit you. Don't do that. Go this way. Do this way. And if you are stubborn and you do your own way, you're going to pay the price later on and you don't get the best in your life. That's why it's so important to hook up to the Holy Spirit and listen to Him. He may say no to you to certain things. You need to obey and listen to Him because He has a better thing for you. He has the best thing waiting for you because you have only 24 hours a day. Is it clear? God may stop you from doing certain things. Amen? And that's what happened to me many times. I want to do something and God said no. Oh, another thing. Sometimes it's not the timing. Sometimes you want to say something badly to somebody. I want to tell this guy something. He needs to repent right now. And then the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 not yet, not yet. It's not the timing. Just keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. Just be calm. Wait for the right timing and you can talk to him. Amen? God knows the timing. He is the God of wisdom. He knows when, how, where, what, everything. So he may stop you from doing something that is not good for you and for the hearer. You need to pull back and say, okay, I listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Are you following me? You understand? Everyone say wisdom. When? How? Where? What? Who? Whom? How do we know the answer? The Holy Spirit. And if we're going to be like a horse that run ahead of the Holy Spirit to do something, he may pull you back. Don't, don't go yet. This is not the right time. Amen? Hallelujah. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit all the time. I get out of trouble so many times at home. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit tell me, not to do something <laughs> that will make Pastor Da unhappy with me. <laughs> okay, First Corinthians, I will finish in a couple minutes here and continue next time. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. Wow. Paul emphasized again and again by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. This scripture means you know the spirit behind the words or the action, whether this come from the spirit of God or the spirit of man or the spirit of demons. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. So the spirit of God is a person who live on the inside of us. 
What does it mean, the gift of the Spirit? Some lay hand on the sick, the sick get healed. Some prophesy, some interpretation of tongues, some the gift of faith. Actually, the real meaning of the gift is the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is like a hand and you are like the glove. That he moves on the inside of you or he manifests himself through you with those supernatural gifts or ability. I give you an example, myself. I'm actually, I'm a very quiet man by nature. I don't like to talk a lot. I'm not good in public or in front of the stage like this by nature. But when I step up, like a while ago, when I step up to grab the microphone, I feel right away the anointing came upon me. I sense it, the heat come. Shh. I sense the anointing, that the Holy Spirit start to move now. And now I can keep talking, talking, talking. And this talking, talking, talking is not my nature at all. I'm not a speaker by nature. But it's the Holy Spirit on the inside of me manifests himself in the gift of preaching and teaching through me. So the Holy Spirit is working on the inside of us for the common good, for the benefits of everybody, including yourself. If we exercise the gift, if we let the Holy Spirit move through us, manifest His gift to us, everyone will be blessed. Amen? And He pick and choose. Some of you may have this gift. Some of you may not have that gift, but another gift. We need to discover what kind of manifestation that the Spirit of God worked through us. Amen? We need to f- discover, we need to find out so that we can live this life fully for the Lord. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to flow to you, one thing that I enjoy the most now, besides, you know, I used to enjoy cutting somebody's brain open, but not anymore. <laughs> when I was a student, oh, I enjoy open, see somebody's brain. But now I enjoy, besides spending time with my wife and spending time in the presence of God, is to do the snorkeling. I love to snorkel in Hawaii. I can go all day long, see all the fish. But I want to tell you, when the Holy Spirit moves in you and you let Him manifest to you through the gift, it's better than snorkeling. It's like the bird enjoy flying. The eagle enjoy soaring. The eagle will not enjoy swimming. And the fish will not enjoy soaring. The fish will enjoy swimming. The same thing. We will feel like an eagle soaring in the gift that we have. People ask me all the time, doctor, pastor, are you not tired? Are you not you know, like bore of laying hand on 1,000 people and cast out a lot of demons. You know, some people come up three or four times in that meeting. And they say, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy laying hand and see people get touched, seeing demons come out. Because you know what? That's my gift. Better than swimming in Waikiki Beach. But I still need to go to Waikiki Beach once a year at least. Amen? It's fun. To flow in your anointing, flow in the gift that you have. You need to discover your gift. You need to find out what the Holy Spirit is working through you, what kind of manifestation. Some of you are evangelists. And when you start to evangelize, you like, wow, the adrenaline come out. Oh, so fun to evangelize. Pastor Da has a gift of giving. Oh, she enjoys shopping. I'm serious. Pastor Da loves to shop, but not for herself. She shops and gives. She is the excellent gift finder. Every time she finds somebody gift, it's perfect for that person. She has the gift. The Holy Spirit will tell her, buy that for that person. And when the person gets it, how do you know? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> the gift of giving. I don't have that gift balanced out a little bit more. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. How many people want the gift of giving? Oh, no hand. <laughs> How many want the gift of healing? Oh, everyone raise hand. But the gift of giving, what? No one want the gift of giving. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
the Holy Spirit is the person, and He works to your life. He can speak to you. He can help non-believers to be saved, to be born again. He can stop you from doing something that is not perfect for you. He prohibits you. He also gives you the joy, the love, the peace. He can tell you the will of the Father. I cannot see that how in the world a believer or a disciple of Jesus can live in this world without communion and fellowship and close relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need Him badly every single day. We need Him. I don't think the churches emphasize the work of the Holy Spirit in us. We need to remind people all the time. We need to have communion with the Holy Spirit. Why do we have this kind of meeting? For a for a few purposes. One of the purposes is to let the fire of God touch and clean people up, so that people will be holy and pure, getting ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus will come back for the beautiful bride, clothed with white linen. And the white linen represent the righteous acts of the saint. Amen. He's coming back, but he's not coming back to the harlot or the prostitute, the church that loved the world. The church is still living in sin. He's coming back for the victorious church, and we cannot be victorious. We cannot be the bride of Christ. We cannot have white linen without the Holy Ghost, without the fire of God. I cannot obey the Bible by my own strength. I need the Holy Spirit to come in and clean up a lot of bad stuff out of me. He helps me, cut on me, operate on me. That's one of the reasons we have the revival service, and why we need to have this on a regular basis. Why? Because we have new people come in all the time, and they are new. They need to be touched. They need to be clean. And not only that, those are older believers here. The cleaning is not done yet. Still need to be clean more. Amen. This is a lifelong process. Not only that, this is the meeting where you can come into the presence of God and learn how to hook up to the Holy Spirit. You learn how to listen to the voice of the Spirit. The Bible says clearly that in the file of God, people can hear God's voice, and that's why we heard the testimony of those young. Kids in Thailand that they saw Jesus and they spoke to Jesus in the meeting because in the presence of the file of God, people can hear the voice of God. This is the good place, laboratory for you to learn how to hear the voice of God. Then when you go out into the field, in the mission field, or at your job place or workplace, you can learn how to hook up to the Holy Spirit there and listen to His voice. Amen. Why people fall down? Number one, the reason because people cannot stand. Why do people fall down? Because they cannot stand. That's one reason. <laughs> the second reason why we go down because it's the posture of yielding. And when you are on the floor, you can focus on God better than sitting or standing because you will be distracted. But on the floor, you can just close your eyes and focus on God, and you can spend as long as you want with God. If you stand, you get tired of your legs. If you sit, the chair may be too hard and hard to sit for a long time. But when you lie on the floor, it's easier. So this is a meeting that people just spend prostrate or kind of be in the reverence fear of God and just let God touch you and spend time with God. Amen. That's how it works in the revival meeting. God wants to speak to you. I notice that people who stand and don't want to fall, within only a few seconds they walk back to sit on somewhere, or they walk back and get go home. Why? Tired in the leg. Two, they cannot focus, so they come out before the spirit start to work in them. Sometimes it takes a while to press in, to really get in to the. Touch of God, God may not touch you right away. Actually, one I just got the Facebook from one lady that she brought her friend, and this friend got prayed for three times. 
nothing happened. Just fall, but no, nothing happened to her. And that night on Sunday night, she went back home, went into her bed, and then the Holy Spirit touched her, and she began to get drunk and cry, laugh in her own bed. In other words, the Holy Spirit really touched her in that meeting, but she released, and God really touched her to the point that she began to feel God in her own home. You see my point here? That sometimes you need to press in, press in, press in, and God will really do something later on, but at least you should yield to the Holy Spirit. Amen? You see my point? You, you understand? Okay. So how many people want to know the Holy Spirit? How many people want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. He will build you up. He will never hurt you. He's good. He's a good Holy Spirit. He's a good God. Amen. In fact, I believe with all my heart, what we are doing here is a normal thing in the eyes of God. Why? We are preparing for the fulfillment of the Scripture. The Scripture said that the glory of the end time church will be greater than the early church in the book of Haggai. So in other words, we are getting close to the end time and the outpouring of the Spirit is going to be stronger and stronger and stronger. The congregation that don't welcome the Holy Spirit will miss it, will miss the outpouring. We are trying to follow what the Scriptures say and the glory will come and touch people change people, produce workers for the gospel. People go out and evangelize and do the work of God more and more. Amen? We are following the Bible. We are preparing people to welcome the glory, to learn how to hook up to the glory, and to spread the glory like that lady in that island. She has brought the glory of God to that small island because she was touched by the fire of God. And we need to be that vessel. Amen? Are you following me? You understand? This is not past allow policy. This is not past allow procedure. This is not my ways. It's in the Bible. And we want the Bible to be fulfilled. And we are preparing ourselves. We are ushering the glory. The glory means the thick presence of God, the kabod, the file of God, to come down into the church. Amen? Understand it now. Otherwise, when the glory show up stronger and stronger in the future, you will be shocked. You don't understand. You need to be educated. Amen? Hallelujah. How many people are ready to be burned today? <laughs> How many people say, I yield? You can do whatever you want. How many people say that if God make me laugh, I'm not going to laugh Chinese style. <laughs> I'm going to laugh Heavenly style. How many people want to look young forever? Forever. You need a dose of the Holy Ghost. A dose of the laughter. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, you know, Pastor Dai and I sometimes we talk in the house, some serious issue, and suddenly we laugh together and just get over. <laughs> Because of the joy of the Lord is in our heart. Amen. We stir up the joy of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ready? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How many people are hungry? How many people say, I don't care what other people think about me? Yes. Today, yes. I'm going to be touched by the Lord. I don't care what other people think about me. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's get ready. Let's get into the operating table. Let's go to the hospital right now.
Stay, stand at the blue line that we make. Blue line. I mean, the front here is okay, but the second, second row have to be on the blue line. And come with hunger. I can sense His mighty presence in this very atmosphere. So whatever you may need, you just reach out and receive and say it's mine. I take it now, Father. Come, Lord. Send your fire, send your glory to touch people, fill people up, Lord, with your glory tonight. Lord, open the flood gate of heaven, pour out your Holy Spirit, and fill your people, Lord. The hungry shall be filled tonight. Whatever. Just reach out and receive and say it's mine. I take it now. Today, take anointing, strong fire tonight. Yes, God's glory is here. I can sense His mighty presence in this very atmosphere. Glory. So whatever. Just reach out and receive and say it's mine. I take it now. <laughs> God's glory is here. Bill, His mighty presence in the fire is most be a fire. So whatever. Just reach out and receive and say it's mine. More fire. I take it now. Oh, the glory is here. Yes, God's glory. We trust that this message is ministered to you. If you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching CDs, please contact us at 206-275-1042. You may also visit our website online at www.NewHopeInternationalChurch.com. To them all gathered in your name, I live to you this new praise song. All the wrongs I have ever done Have been washed away By your only son Bring me your tired You said Bring me your weak Bring me your hungry masses We seek your glory 
Your glory. 